What is going on, everybody? David Braga back with guest TMB back on our unnamed podcast to talk about Iowa State football. Came away with a six-point win against the Northern Iowa Panthers and coach Mark Farley. And uh, TMB, it's never easy opening the season, especially against the Panthers, is it? No. I hate <laughs> playing you and I. I cannot stand it. It's never easy. Nothing ever goes well. You always come out. Even if you come out with a win, you come out disappointed because we never win by much. Right. So I wish we'd <laughs> stop scheduling them. Give us the UNLV game one. Yeah. And UNLV. Play. Give us give us Akron every year. I'm okay yeah, with that. Yeah, exactly. Play them game one and move on. Hell, we beat Akron with Jacob Park at quarterback. We did. No. Uh, we did. <laughs> that game wasn't even close, if I remember right. Um, no, it wasn't. I want to say 42-24. Yeah, some, something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not like, it's not even like, okay, the defense was stellar with the exception of yep. one, basically one play. Yep. Defense yep. gave up basically three points the entire game. There was the, like, what was it, like a 52 yard slant? 50 <laughs> yard slant with a broken tackle. That both Mike Rose uh, and Greg Eisworth, like, missed a tackle on. <laughs> yeah, I think it was actually Kamani King. Oh, was it King? Okay. Yeah, Haycock has said after the game he thought Rose had him down. And yeah. That's just something they'll clean up, but it was good coverage. Right. I, it was. You have, <laughs> I mean, leading, like. Leading up to that, you had Will McDonald who thought he had McElwain down. Yeah. And he got out of his sack. So that whole drive was a fluke. You can't. You just can't let it keep happening. But right. We really give up three points. I'm not. Stellar. I'm not too worried about it continuing. I mean, teams in the Big Twelve are gonna get a big play. Yeah. Um, but I, you know what? It's it's week one. Yep. You know, Brock Purdy was Brock Purdy looked good with what little we actually got to see of him. He did. And um, I liked I liked him from the aspect of he didn't do anything stupid. Right. Um. He didn't try to scramble too early or too late i think that i think you and i had one coverage sack and he's tried to run out the middle and they had a guy sitting yeah. there on him. but besides that he was smart with the ball um didn't throw in any double coverage that i saw I, um, I was gonna say i don't think they really had any like pass pass breakups at all with the exception of no. the with the exception of the joe skates fumble that i'm not convinced yeah. was a fumble <laughs> i don't think it was either I, um i refuse to only, believe that it was a fumble actually yeah. I don't. I, Campbell even said he should have challenged it. Um, yeah. I don't think that was a fumble. I, you could say that. I don't know if you remember. Chase Allen was open and he tried to hit him um, when he could. Oh, it was. First down. It was a. It was like a third and third and something, Fire. and and he yeah. he rolled out to his left and he just missed Chase. Could have ran for it. Yep, just missed Chase Allen over um, So maybe just you know, Iowa just run that if you have it. Yeah. Um, can't can't let up. But besides that, I was very pleased with Purdy. Yeah, like you said, he 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 found the he found the guy that was open, like pretty yeah. much the whole game. I mean, a lot of it was underneath. There were a couple a couple good deep balls to to Hutch and Milton. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, Hutch made a great. God, it was a good what throw. a he put it. What a catch, though. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Oh my God. Keep give me more yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he put it where only he could catch it. Right. But also, Hutchinson had to make a great play on the right. ball. Right. And it was um, it was one of those balls where. It's like when the quarterback takes a deep shot and you know it's going to be caught out of the hand. Yeah. It just felt like one of those. Like you just knew someone yep. was coming down with it, and and Hutch made a great catch on it. I will say his best throw of the day was the incompletion to Skates in the end zone. Skates has to give him more room. Yeah. On that on that route, uh, if he does, that was what? a perfect <laughs> ball. What a perfect ball to Skates. And it it what wasn't even with? it wasn't even really an incompletion because he caught it. Yeah, he, <laughs> he caught just, it. He, couldn't get a foot in he just he just couldn't couldn't get the toe tap um, and that was yeah but yeah i brock pretty looked good i i don't know what like okay northern iowa for an fcs school has got a has got a solid front seven they but do th- there was no room for Brees hall whatsoever on saturday there was not i mean um, i they I, have a they have a small and quick front yeah um, they were getting off the ball faster than we were Oh, for sure. From what I noticed, for sure. Given, I know Daryl Simmons really struggled in the in the run, uh, run blocking game. Yeah. Um. So I just think you and our offensive line has always improved from week one to week two. 
Right. And I guess the I guess the only thing that I would say, right, is the only thing that really concerned me about that was that how much Matt Campbell bragged about the O-line during the offseason. Yeah. And and yeah. I I trust Matt Campbell to his word that this is the best offensive line that we've had. Yeah. But to come out and look as flat as we did off the ball. 100%. Yep. And I mean, I was not going to be any easier. <laughs> no, because <laughs> and everyone was talking about we have the advantage on the size with Iowa, which we do. Their we defensive do. Line is not big. No, but if you no. and I gave us troubles, what thinks you? What makes you think Iowa won't? I mean, that's a that's that a front size. seven NFL factory. Yeah, over in is. Iowa City, and I mean, we just we just couldn't get off the ball. I mean, there was there was no room at all. No. There wasn't. With the exception and, of with the exception of Hall's longest run that was on a pitch. Yes. He and, got he picked up twelve. Yes. I mean there was nothing. Absolutely was nothing nothing between the tackles. Nope. Which and uh, an stretch play to the short side of the field in your jumbo package. I don't know who <laughs> the hell came up with that. I guess me. Dumbest <laughs> play I've ever seen. Yeah, what I mean, the, you, what you the hell, Tom? <laughs> yeah. You gotta tear that out and throw it away. Run up the middle. You have Oh, all over 300 pounds, I believe, on the offensive line now. All over 310, I even think. Why aren't you running it up the damn middle? Yeah. Put Rob, put 6'8", 360 Rob Hudson in there and let him block as a fullback for, for Hall. Right. Just run it up the middle. And well, the and was it was it on the Hall touchdown or somewhere on that drive that we put we put Brock under center and had, like, two fullbacks in the game? Was that, yes. on, was that on the touchdown I or was that? I believe it was. I believe that was on the touchdown drive. Man, that was that was something. I don't think yeah. I I don't think I've ever seen Iowa State have that formation. Maybe no, that was the and, third one. That, yeah, that Santa and, was talking about. Yeah. yeah, so I think we ran about three offensive formations. Um, I, I'm glad we finally have the guys to do that. So even yeah. in the Joel Laning er, Campbell era, you never saw guys under center. No, you always saw them in shotgun because we never were able to get that push. So I'm glad we have the guys to do it now. Just fucking do it. Don't. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I mentioned it in the, in the postmortem a little bit. I didn't want to drag too much on, on Manning and, and the yeah. offense. Cause just cause, just cause we got the win and the defense looked yeah. great and we did what we had to do on offense, but yeah. man, it just feels so bad when you punt the ball on fourth and six inches Oh, on that, fourth, yeah. like close to midfield. Like yeah. I get the understanding of wanting to punt it cause you trust your defense. But at that same yeah. note, if you trust your defense at, the opponent's like 10 yard line on defense. Why exactly. wouldn't you trust them at midfield? Exactly. I mean, and I get you want the, would... I get you want the field position, right? Cause them yep. punting it from the 10 is a lot better than them punting it from the 50. Yep. But I mean, that's, you got to trust. I mean, Brees Hall didn't have a good game. Like we said, there was no room, but I mean, six yeah. inches or, yeah. or yeah. hell just throw Brock 30. under center and sneak it. Yeah. <laughs> throw if those... you want to put Deckers under there, that dude yeah. is a tank. If you don't want to hurt Brock, whatever, put Deckers in there. Oh, or for sure. Even Aiden Bowman's a big kid, and get six inches. God damn, just push them. And then the, like <laughs> and then the punt wasn't even good. No, he punted like twenty three yards. It was a terrible. By the yeah. way, Corey Dunn actually had a good game. He did. He had a, he, he had did. a fifty seven yard cannon in like the yeah, first quarter. Did. We I see mean, the more consistency, I, but God, I just, that was, that was probably the, the play that frustrated me the most, honestly, I agree. other yep. than us not punching it in like immediately yep. on the one yard line or whatever we were at. I mean, that was, that was probably the one thing that frustrated me the most was it's six inches, like 100%. go shove Brock yep. under center and just fucking shove somebody out of the way. Pardon yeah. my French, but <laughs> like come on you got it yeah you got it and i get like you said field position our de- like our defense you're not stopping them cool whatever six inches dude it's not like it's fourth and four yeah like just I, just under center go forward i so, you know but, but like i said a win is a win it's it is. it's better than we were last year after week yep. one so and i'm, I'm- I'll give the defense credit. Looked amazing. Oh, man. I thought the front the front got pressure. I saw we only sent two at times. Yeah, it was um, it was and, weird. Uh McDonald was often the spy. He was. And I I thought that Vance got hurt. I thought it was a little weird. Right? Cuz cuz Will's the guy that you want going after the quarterback. I yep. mean it it seemed to work, so I'll give I'll give the professor his due. Yeah, um, and I don't think we're going to we should not use a spy against Petrus. That's no, just wasting linebacker. 
I don't think so. Put him so. on Laporta. Do whatever you need to. Put him on Goodson. No <laughs> point in using his butt. <laughs> we'll, if we'll get to... Iowa's going to beat us, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to Iowa in a bit, but I think Sam Laporta had like half of Petrus's completions, by the way. Yes, so... I believe. I think you're right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to them in a little bit here, but... I mean, yeah. I mean, I thought Haycock had a had a great game plan. I he mean, did, like usual. Yeah, I, Will no McIlvain could out. not. I mean, you and I doesn't have like top tier like receiver cores or anything. No. Nope. Uh, but McIlvain's a solid solid guy for them, and he couldn't much like Brock Purdy, uh, with the exception of the two throws. I mean, they weren't throwing the ball downfield at all. It was mostly slants nope. underneath stuff. Nope. D- secondary gave up nothing deep. Um, nope. I will say it was it was there a few times. They just yeah, missed it. Yeah. Isworth got I saw a stat online. Isworth got beat deep on three out of four. Um, they were just all overthrown, so you gotta fix that. Yeah. But, um but either than that they look stellar. Detron yeah. Young even I thought looked much improved <laughs> from last year. He got a he did something. He got a pick. He did. He did get a pick. It was, on, was an a, awful throw, on a but, horrific throw. But yes. <laughs> He, he he caught it. Get it. He didn't drop it. Yes, that's he, the caught thing. It. he caught it. So um, yeah, suck on that, Iowa GIF users. No, I, yep. I, I mm, I'm gonna regret saying that. Yeah, um, that, after uh, he dropped the game winning interception yeah. on Saturday. Oh god. Um, oh, but, is he, is he oh, young please no. Stellar. Oh god, um, he's it, he got blew it. that running back up. He, I don't know if you saw that. He has Second got. Half, I believe. He has got to be the like one of the most entertaining players to watch. Yeah, in the I country. mean, he is he is all no over the field. I, you He's know, part of me dude. with he with all of these with all of these targeting calls, I I worry about it. Me too. But I, I mean, ninety eight percent of the time he's going with the shoulder. He's hitting yep. center mass. I mean, yep. he he knows how to hit people. It's just a matter of does the NCAA know what's actually what targeting yep. and to this point i'm not convinced they do it's if become the gets, new catch um, if he happened to get ejected saturday for a bullshit targeting call oh my god uh, matt campbell will be worse than the oklahoma game when they didn't get the offside matt call. campbell will be wor- jack dude, trice dude is gonna is blind. oh my god dude i can't matt Campbell might get tossed too i pff, i would <laughs> yeah i mean if that that if they repeated, the, even repeated, like the same thing happened. Yeah, as what happened in the Oklahoma game. Receivers Matt falling down, down, like yep. you can't, you can't account for that. I'm no, sorry, you not. can't, yeah. you can't account for that. Matt Campbell won't get ejected, and I'll be. And I, uh, I think it was Joel Klatt during uh, during the noon game on Saturday. I can't, I can't remember who. Oh, it was Penn State, Wisconsin. Yes. Yep. And because uh, one of the Penn State guys got got kicked for targeting and he was talking yep. about oh well you can't kick a guy that's a stellar player that's making a good play and everybody on twitter lost their minds because they're like well that's not a good reason because he's a fun player like because he's a good yeah. well good players know how to tackle exactly good yep. players aren't gonna throw their throw themselves at the head of the opponent on purpose knowing damn well they're gonna get tossed there Ooh. has to be a line there has to be a line for intent i'm sorry yep. that's my targeting rant over that's we can go into that agree. in a different episode, but yep. I, there has to be a line for intent with targeting. It's 100%. such a BS rule. I hope it doesn't come into play at all on Saturday. Um, or this season. Or this I season. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm so. not convinced. Speaking of Saturday, TMB, I don't know if you heard, uh, Iowa's coming to town. Yes. It's really. the Cyhawk game on Saturday. Both, both teams want to know. Both teams ranked in the top 10, first time ever in the Cyhawk game. First time game. ever ranked. Yeah. Not even just top 10, first time ever ranked, both of them. Yeah, I, that's it's it's definitely a big one. Definitely yeah. a big one. Uh, Iowa, of course, led led by Spencer Petrus, who we mentioned. Not, not who I would, you know, look at as a star quarterback, but it's Iowa. And they'll find some way to do something with him. Yep, they will. So, who knows? Like I said, he had 13 completions last week against Indiana because he didn't have to do anything. Yep, he did not. I mean, that that defense put Michael Penix Jr. in the clamps. Yes, I mean, they they threw that Indiana offense in the basement and told him not to come out. I mean, that was – what was it, 34 to 6? I mean, that's – I mean, I look. I'm not high on Indiana by any means, but that is a that is a curb stomp if I've ever seen one. 
Yeah. Um, Penix looks awful. Credit tie with defense. I don't want to. Um, Penix looks awful. He didn't never look comfortable. Right. Um, Tom Allen made zero adjustments. I, I'll say I did not watch the whole game, but. Um, right. Tom Allen did not seem to make adjustments. They have no run game. The offensive line couldn't block. Um, the wide receiver Riley Moss's second pick six or first or second pick six was a tip up by the receiver. Yeah, that was. Right? Uh, I think that was the first one. Okay. The, yeah, the receiver like off. slipped, and yeah, then hey, got back man. up, and then it just went off his hands. I'm like, yeah. I tweeted about it at the time too. I, I I said something about how Indiana had actually offered me a scholarship to go play wide receiver. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Because look, I'm a big guy. I'm not gonna be running fast enough to slip, and I'd like to think <laughs> I would have caught that. So, <laughs> there so, you go. You know, it, man, that credit to Iowa's defense, but Indiana looked awful. Yeah, and I mean, I also credit credit the Iowa City crowd making that making that place hell. For they Indy. did. I mean, they. Yeah, look, that was loud. Look, I don't I don't like Iowa, but or should we when, should we call them Indian Ia? Yeah, <laughs> yeah down there Indian Ia. Yeah. God, how? Oh, how God. do you? So here's what I heard on Twitter. Who All knows right. if it's true? It's Twitter. Um. The equipment managers did not double check the jerseys before the game, and they didn't bring bra- backups, which you're supposed to do. You're <laughs> supposed to bring backups in case you know they get stolen, right? Or something. Indiana didn't bring backups. Golly, man! So yeah, they ran out there with Indiana on their jerseys. Good old Indiana, the Hoosiers. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just just taking a look here at ESPN, uh, the matchup predictor here, according to the FPI. Uh, they've got it 56.7% in favor of Iowa State. Uh, what, what do you think? Do you think 50, 55, 56%? Do you think that's, do you think that's fair? I think Iowa State's a four point favorite. What do you, what do we feel yeah, about that? Four and a half on the line right now. Um, oh, it's moved, I, it's moved up to four and a half. Yeah. It's four and oh half. God. Yeah. So, um, I like that. Um, you like I that? Think, I, <laughs> I, I think we're going to – I don't know. I like the 56%. Okay. Um, I do think we're going to win. Okay. Um, we stopped the run game. Iowa has no offense. I do not trust Petrus or Petrus to make the consistent throws needed uh, to move down. the. Matt Campbell's going to play the field position game. We're going to see a boring offense again. Yeah. He, in the past, Campbell has tried to beat Ferentz at his own game. You can go back and rewatch it. He wants the field position, and he wants – We've it's been like six years since we picked off uh, Iowa, I believe. I he yeah, I think it's turnover battle. I think they've turned the ball over once over this five game win streak. Yeah, and I, um, I'll be honest, I I couldn't even tell you when that was. I no, I can't. Re- I couldn't remember the last time we turned over Iowa. No, nope. I legitimately, legitimately can't tell you. I know we've dropped about eighteen hundred. <laughs> uh, I think Greg Eisworth dropped like three himself in Ames last time. Well, I think it was. Um, was it Lawrence Whitehead one go right off his hands last year? Yeah. God, yep. man. So I know oh, no, that was that was against Oklahoma State, I think. I don't know. Okay. I we just yeah. dropped so many last year. It just it, yeah. it, they all blended together in two um, years ago. Hey, God. So I think and he wants to dominate the line of scrimmage, which obviously parents does too, and win time of possession. Um if we if we win the kickoff, I will not be surprised to see Campbell take the ball. Um that's, he that's wants an interesting to repeat one. Oregon. And I predicted the same score, 34-17 Iowa State. If we can dominate the possession and put them at the 25 to start every drive, we will dominate Iowa this game. Hey, and uh, They do not have the offense to go down the field if we stop the run. It's, I just don't see it. It's funny you mentioned the 25-yard um, line because we, if we don't we turn can the kick, ball over. We can kick and we, touchbacks. And, and um, <laughs> Corey Dunn has a good game. We're going to dominate Iowa. It's we, just gonna happen. We have a we have. We uh, have I do uh, not see the offensive firepower on that team to march down the field on this defense. No, I look. I there was uh uh Josh Pate has been really high on Iowa State, and he had his he had his Cyhawk sort of segment. I think it was last night or this morning, uh on uh, twenty four seven Sports, and he he raved about Tyler Goodson. Which I'll be honest, there were a lot of Cyclone fans who were like, "What Tyler Goodson? He's terrible." I was like, "Hold on, <laughs> Tyler Goodson's not terrible." But I don't trust, like you said, I don't trust Spencer Petras to to spread our defense out. So I, I don't know. Am I am I wrong on that? Like I, I feel like especially with you know guys like Aishim Young who Iowa hasn't played yet. You know I feel like we uh, we have a really good shot with uh, with number one back there. 
there. Oh, did we <laughs> did we lose our guest? All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna stall a little bit of time here for for my man to get back here. Um, but yeah, let us let us know what you guys think down below about uh, Iowa and Iowa State. Um, I, I don't like I don't like being a four four and a half point favorite. I uh, I think it's I think it's just setting up Iowa to cover or win outright. Um, as we uh, try to get TMB back here, um, I talked about it a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think it was during my Iowa State season preview. Uh, this is going to be a dogfight. This is going to be a low scoring game. Um, I I would be surprised if the loser of this football game scores more than like seventeen or fourteen points. Um, as uh, again, apologies for the uh, technical difficulties. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be very surprised if the, uh, if the loser of this game scores 17 or more, I have, I have the loser scoring exactly 17. I have Iowa state eking it out just because I trust Brock Purdy against Iowa's defense slightly more than I trust Petrus and Tyler Goodson against our defense. I, I look, I, I know Iowa's won. You there? Yeah, I'm here. How's it going? You back? <laughs> Hello. Um, as again, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, Oh, do we have him back? Um, but yeah, I have it 20 to 17 Iowa state, uh, with a, with eking out a three point win. I think, I think like TMB said, you know, control the field position, play a little bit of Iowa's game, but then we also need to play Iowa state's game. Need to play our own game. Take those shots once in a while. Iowa's got a good secondary. Um, but if Brock Purdy makes the smart decisions that he made against you and I, also against Iowa, if he just plays consistent, plays well enough, doesn't put the ball in harm's way, which admittedly he has done against Iowa, um, and that's partial credit to Iowa's defense and knowing how to game plan against him. Uh, but, you know, just keeping the ball out of harm's way. Hello? Hello? Is it a is it a problem on my end? <laughs> is it a problem on my end? I don't know. Um. All right. Again, sorry about the technical difficulties. TMB, are you back? <laughs> I am back. All right. Uh, I was just talking about uh, my my prediction is twenty to seventeen Iowa State. I'd be okay. very surprised if the loser of this football game scores more than 17, and I'd be very surprised if the winner scores more than 20. <laughs> okay. I think this will, have, is just going to be another one of those dog fights, just an absolute slugfest, um, where I think Brock Purdy is capable of making at least one more play than Spencer Petrus. I would sure hope so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, look, yeah, I don't I trust so. Spencer Petrus a lot. I think he's... I don't think he's a great quarterback, but Brock has made some questionable decisions. He has. <laughs> and he puts he the has. ball in harm's way, and I was just mentioning, as long as he plays how he did on Saturday, take those shots when they're available, play it. Yep. You know, Don't necessarily play it overly conservative, but take who's open, take the dump-offs if you need them, put the ball in Always the right player's hands. I like Iowa State to come out, uh, come out on top. His safety blanket's going to be back. Yes, Charlie Kohler is back again. I, yep. I mentioned it before we started recording. It amazes me how inept we are without Charlie Kohler. And it, it's going to be interesting next year. Dean better step up. Um, yeah. Because, man, you can tell when he's not there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you could tell that they wanted to play him this week. Um, yeah. He was suited up on the sideline. Yeah, there but. was a uh... – there was a lot of a lot of the I'm gonna I'm gonna say kids and get in trouble. There was a lot of kids that suited up this weekend. There was uh, J- Jalen Knoll played a lot of yep. snaps. Easton Dean played a lot of snaps. Of course, some of that probably helped that Kohler was out. Yep. Um. Yep. But yeah, I mean, I 
I was I was surprised. I mean, granted, those are the two that kind of pop off the page because those are the two yep. kind of big names that you hear about. But um, Jaquan Amos played played in the secondary yeah. a little bit, uh, yep. which by the way, I love that kid. So do I. I and TJ Tampa. I think he's one. a stud. TJ Tampa is another good good player in the secondary. Uh, I kind of mentioned him a little bit. Uh, I think it was on Twitter maybe where Iowa State's got a very versatile secondary. They do. We can just kind of plug and plug and play when we need to. Yep. With you know having a guy like Anthony Johnson to lock down somebody, having a guy like Greg Eisworth to just you know do what he does. He do, he just kind of does everything. So I don't he really does. know. <laughs> don't and really know I don't know where forward. when Iowa can't run the ball if they can't where are they going to throw? I I'll be I'll be honest. I haven't done a lot of research on Iowa. I. I don't know much of their pass catchers other than Laporta. <laughs> That's about our line, and when I trust our linebackers against him. I especially trust the Big 12 leader of interceptions. I think he was even yep. the country leader in interceptions, Mike Rose, Yep. in coverage. 100%. Big 23 in the middle. If you – okay, say you send him. Jake Hummel played amazing Saturday. Jake uh, Hummel, enough Jake Hummel enough. might be one of the most underrated players on this team. Uh, yes, 100%. he he always does what's asked asked of him, and yep. it's he he's <laughs> it's weird to compare him to Joel Lanning because Lanning like played quarterback and then linebacker, yep. but he, it's kind of the same role. He just Very he just comparable. does what the coaches does what the coaches yep. tell him, and and, and then you got doing it. Orion Vance, who he is fast. That dude has some speed. He's got um, some wheels, some explosiveness. Yeah, so I like him in coverage. Um, Gary Vaughn had a great game in the second half, so. Whatever you got to do. Um, I also like I also like Orion Vance opposite Will McDonald. Yes. Get, get some edge pressure. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, that second possession, that left tackle stood ooh, no chance. He, it was it was weird to me. I I don't want to like go back to the UNI game too much, yeah. but it was weird to me that we had two sacks the first two possessions, and I don't know I don't know that we had another one. No, I don't think we did. We could have so, Will McDonald yeah. finished tackle, but we it seemed. Um, we seem to dial up the pressure a little more second half. And I said dial yeah. up, I, said, I mean, more send more than three. Um, right. And it just made him get rid of the ball faster, which usually led to incompletions. Right. Which I, I'm fine with Saturday. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. I want, <laughs> I was, I was kind of one of those teams where it feels like they don't do anything and then they just randomly pull like a trick out of the bag. Yep. So, 100%. I was like some sort of stupid reverse double pass, like kick pass. I don't, I don't know what, but yep. <laughs> it always feels like they pull at least one out of the, out of the hat. So yep. I, and those are, those are plays that I'm looking at guys like TJ Tampa, like Jaquan Amos. Yeah. Um, where if you're in the game, when that's going on, are you, are you mature enough in the defense to know that it's going on? And are you not going to get beat by it? You know what I saw on Twitter this offseason? You What's know that, that fake punt uh, Texas ran on us? Oh, and yeah. Rory Walling stopped yeah, Rory it. Walling. Rory Walling saw that on film from three years ago. From three years ago? From three years ago. My from man. Tom Herman's first year. There. My guy. Now, yeah. So you got to you gotta hope those guys see stuff like that. Because they will try Rory to take Walling. advantage. Speaking of Rory Walling, guy got the first tackle of the game last week. Not surprising on at all. On the kickoff. And it was a good tackle, too. Good old Rory Wall. He ran right across the field. So, absolutely. I don't know how much of it you caught. I said 34 17 this weekend. Yeah. Um, I don't see. Yeah, you kind of, you kind of cut out a little bit after that, but I did, I did. I would be, I would be truly surprised if it, if a team scored more than like 23. Let's be honest. I'm probably not right, but I'm just going to be hopeful. (laughs) So I can see this game going one of two ways, which is weird because I kind of picked the third way. This is going to be the game that both defenses just absolutely collapse and the loser scores 35. Yep. Or both the defenses continue to do what they're doing. Purdy throws the ball into double coverage every other possession. Peters can't complete a pass, and the final score is 10-7. to 7. I have a like, question for you. All right, shoot. So Purdy's a senior. Mm-hmm. We know he's had his problems. What yep. does it take in this Iowa game for 100 acres to be put in? Or does oh, any can, can anything happen? Uh, I would say if if Purdy starts this game like he did the Baylor game, where he had, like, what, like three picks in the first half? 
Yeah. I yeah. would not be surprised if Hunter Deckers came in. That I'm being said, luck. I certainly don't I, I I'll be honest. I want I want Purdy to play every snap of every game this year. <laughs> oh me too. Hundred percent. Um just because I, I love the kid. Yep. And more importantly than that, I want him to break Brett Myers' passing yards record against Iowa. <laughs> Yep, that'd be and, awesome. And he needs he needs three nineteen to do that. So yeah. I don't care how much we're up or down by, let the kid let the kid sling it. Yep. I look 100%. I obviously I want the win more, but yep. to, to break that record against Iowa as opposed to With UNLV win, or UNI, God awesome. please. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you gotta think if he throws the three nineteen we win the game. Oh absolutely. So, absolutely. If he breaks that record, we have the win. And hey, you know what? If me wanting that makes this our Super Bowl, then I guess it's our Super Bowl. Yep, one hundred percent. They can say that. Oh, it 100%. really doesn't matter. I want to win this game as much as I want. Hey, you want to know? You want to know something? I think every week is a Super Bowl. That's exactly what I was just saying. Because because I want to win every game on the week that it's being played more than any other game. Exactly. So if that makes exactly. this the Super Bowl. I'll, I'll take winning the Super Bowl. Well, yeah, exactly. A win's a win. Call it whatever you want. Which, so. by the way, just a just a quick shout out. Stop pretending like this game doesn't matter. Oh, I know. That's, I, like are, I see this on both sides. I'm I'm looking at you, Iowa and Iowa State Twitter people. Stop pretending like this game doesn't matter. It's a like, top ten win. Absolutely, particularly this year. Stop pretending it doesn't matter. Yeah, for precisely that reason. You think if it... Iowa or Iowa State is on the verge of making the college football playoff, they're not going to look at this game? Yeah. Not only in a head-to-head -head sense, but as just an indicator for where a team is at. You think they're not going to look at this game? <laughs> like, it, yeah. this game is this... massive. Every game matters. Because you drop one and you're out. So 100%. I hate people that act like that. It matters so much as a top-10 win for either team absolutely for either team so it matters all right so we've got a 34 what did you say 34 17 yes i have 34 17 34 17 we've got a 20 to 17 so i guess the magic number for iowa state is 18 yes that's what <laughs> in our in the wide right natty light discord we're even saying i don't see so if you go back and look how iowa scored two pick sixes and a tyler gibson 60 yard run was three touchdowns yep all these them was 17 points yep so just we'll see. And and like I said, like I said with Brock, as long as he is smart with the ball. Yep. If and, we see another TCU interception. God, if we fumble, whatever oh, you want to call God. that. If he man. if he does that, it's it's an L. Just it is. Don't even oh God. I just don't want the kid to put too much pressure on himself. No, that's that's, that, that's what I mean, right? Like take the underneath passes when they're there. Take Charlie yep. Kohler when he's there. Take Brees Hall when he's there. Don't I don't care I don't care if we score two or three points as long as we win. Yeah. Just take what's there. Exactly. Play the play the Oregon way. How many we had so many eight, nine minute possessions in that Oregon game. Oh, as many, man, that about was, as many as you can have. That was a textbook game. Yeah. I and mean, that's how people are Matt, like you saw say twenty nineteen. We yeah, we had a high octane offense. We ended up going seven and six and losing to Notre Dame. Matt yeah. Campbell doesn't want that. He no. wants the nine-minute possessions. Yeah. He wants to play Kirk Parrish football. Right. He really does. And no one wants to accept that as an Iowa State fan. Dude, but there's wants... nothing There's nothing that pisses me off more <laughs> than scoring 14 points and winning. Yeah. But, but it's a win. Exactly, it's a win, and that's how Campbell wants to play the game. Exactly. He wants to dominate special teams. He wants to dominate a lot of scrimmage, and he wants to dominate time of possession. Right. So. Uh, one last thing. Before we uh, wrap up here, uh, TMB, I got to ask you, black uniforms. I, How do you feel I about love it? this combination. I absolutely love it. So, but, so for those but that don't we, know, for those that don't know, this combination, we beat TCU 2018. Yes. Uh, it was 2019. 2019. Uh, yeah, 2019. Yeah, 49, it, was, it was a home 24. game. Home yep. game, so... Uh, it was 49-24. And, uh, and really, they didn't score a lot. It was like it was like 35-7 at halftime yeah, or something. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was... Yeah. Yeah, and fun fact for, for those of you that didn't see this tweet of mine, uh, I will always remember that game, not for the Brock Purdy hezzy, 
not for the fact that we demolished TCU in black and white uniforms that very uh, closely resemble uh, specific TCU uniforms. <laughs> yes. Uh, but because when TCU ran out on the field to start the game, uh, like in the pregame, I was standing in the student section with a couple friends of mine, and TC ran out onto the field, and I yelled, TCU, ha, more like TC poo. And a guy that was sitting in front of us turned around and gave me a fist bump and said, nice. And that was, <laughs> it was such a stupid fucking joke. <laughs> but there was one guy that appreciated it. So yep. shout out to that guy. I, I never got his name, but shout out to that guy. So, um, I love them. I do think the blacks could use a r- touch of red. Yeah, somewhere. that's that's honestly the biggest complaint I see is that yeah. there's there's no cardinal anywhere. I hate the yellow and black together. That looks awful. I've yeah. seen some some designs. If you swapped, black shouldn't touch yellow. If you want to swap the red and then yellow numbers, that's better. But I don't T- like TMB can't see it, but I'm currently circling the Hawkeye logo on ESPN.com. <laughs> <laughs> hate yeah. it when black touches yellow it's disgusting yeah. do not like it <laughs> i was even thinking about that but that's a good point <laughs> um so uh, if we added like ohio state has some really nice black red um alternate uniforms that i think we could roll out something like that you, with you know who else has you know who else has a really good black and red uniform Minnesota? cincinnati cincinnati does too cincinnati which i still don't know if that one tweet i'm not gonna pull it up but there was like a cincinnati uniform twitter account yeah that, yep. that kind of like jokingly poked fun at iowa state for wearing black and white with one of their yep. uniforms like next to it and i really i don't know if it's poking fun at iowa for always complaining or if it's actually they think that we stole their uniform i choose to pre- I, I prefer to think that they're poking fun at iowa because they're trying to join our conference yep so now, I'm going to live with that. Know, so. And <laughs> there was someone, there was a Cincinnati fan on Twitter. Um, that was like last year before we were going to join the big 12. I was the most, I would say it's the most overrated team in the country this year. Now that we're pretty much in the big 12, I'll fucking die for Iowa state. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> Dude. I love it. I so, love it. Not to, not to get into too much conference alignment talk. We'll, uh, we'll probably talk about yeah. that in a little bit of a later episode, but some yep. big, big stuff coming, we think. Uh, Man, I I still want to try and join the Big Ten, but if it doesn't work, yeah. this conference could be worse. So, just to just to wrap up here, TMB, you've given your score prediction with an Iowa State. I'm not going to call it a blowout, even though it's a 17-point win. Uh, what's, what's, what's the one thing about this game that you're either looking forward to seeing or that you, uh, you, uh, you think could – make the difference Brees hall revenge for the tyler goodson comments if oh, he breaks like out that. and has like 200 yards you know he's gonna throw shade back God, um, i might be subtle that. but you know it's gonna happen or i would love to see a joe skates breakout game it this week i like that let's let's get brock to 319 yes yes <laughs> I, so Sorry, uh, did you have anything else? To I was add? gonna say it was under. Um, can't remember who it was under someone's tweet. Um, someone had said, "Let's get Brock to three nineteen. I said, "Yeah, we'll be celebrating that at the end of the first quarter." <laughs> so there you go. Let's go if we can hit that. God, that would be three nineteen in the first quarter. God, that'd be that'd be all kinds of records. You'd think, Man. right? Yeah. So I guess you just have, you I guess just have to hope we don't blow it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess for me, I I have talked a lot about hitting hitting 319. So I would definitely like to see that, and I do think that would change this game a lot. But I've talked about this guy so much. He is my favorite player on the defense. He is going to make or break this game for Iowa State. It is number one in the secondary, Aishim Young. Hasn't played Iowa yet, and you know... You know damn well that man is on a mission this year. We already saw it against you and I yes. coming back from that awful targeting call in the Big 12 championship game, not getting to really influence that game at all. No. He is on a mission this year. I said it, the, I said it the minute he got ejected from that game that this was going to be the Aishim Young year. I'm sticking to it. 
He is going to make or break this game. He's going to intercept Spencer Petrus at least once. I think that happens to win the game. I think it's Oklahoma. God. Oh, dude. You know how fucking ballistic I would go in the stands dude, if that was the I, case? I do think that's going to happen. Oh, my oh, God, at least dude. I feel it. Oh, right? God. I, I would. I, I also see John Haycock sending him out of a missile early on a safety blitz to try and report would... the turnover. Do something. He's going to make a jump. I would crowd surf the student section <laughs> if Aishim Young picked off Petrus to end this game. Book it. I my, will I my, will convince people prediction. to crowd surf me. <laughs> I love it. I will dude, I love the kid. He knows how to hit people. He knows how to tackle. He he it's like he He's sees smart. the field differently and I love it. He's oh god. He, I, I, I fucking love him. He's, what he's a great catch on game. Saturday, by the way. That is a hard catch to make on his interception. So I saw a lot of people well, complaining because it cost us like 15 yards of field position. I'll, I'm, I'll be honest. Do shit anyways. I'll be honest. One, it didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and two, you wouldn't think it would matter against UNI. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we should have we should have been going up and down the field on him. A hundred percent. Our offense wasn't going to Fucking take the stat, play, so. bro. Yeah, exactly. So. But you're right. That was a that was a hell of a grab. Um, but yeah, we've been going for about 40 minutes here. That's about as long as we like to keep these episodes. TMB, thank you as always for joining us. Of course, thanks for having me on. Uh, on all things Iowa State, talking about recapping the UNI win, which a win is a win. We'll take it, and giving yep. our predictions and thoughts on the Cyhawk game. Game day is in town. We didn't even really talk about that. Uh, oh yeah no we didn't <laughs> okay let's get real fast who's your prediction for uh guest guest picker oh god it has to be trey young right uh, it has I to would be think so that's my guess but you're really bringing an oklahoma basketball but like in conference so i i get the charlie Kohler connection yeah but right. i'm not it's i guess it's better than eric church all right I'm, I'll, I'll go out on a second limb that would piss off more people than trey young it's gonna be Walker Hayes. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> oh. There was a tweet today that said it's an all-time guest picker from College Game Day, and I'm like, oh, they must have gone, they must have gone out and got someone real good. Yeah, we um, fancy like Applebee's on a date. Oh night. <laughs> man, I don't know if I could even watch Game Day at that point. Oh God. I think it might be Dan McCarney. Dan McCarney. I, I've seen a lot surprised. of people saying Gable. But yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't appreciate that. <laughs> so I listen. I don't know. I listened to that um, wide right and natty light. Yeah, with, uh, uh, with, Bear. with the bear. Yeah, and they brought that up. Like I would not. I he's not known as an Iowa really an Iowa State guy anymore. Dude, I. Um, dude, it's just more ammo for Iowa to be like. Oh, it's about us. Yeah, <laughs> like they came to they came to game day for us, like. Because Eric, because Eric Church wasn't bad enough. No, like who picks I? He picked. Okay, was Iowa. he right? Yeah, he, was he right? Yes, but horse shit, you don't pick against someone on their own game day site. God, I, I, I legitimately, I can't think of a guest picker that wasn't associated with the school or didn't pick the hosting school. Yeah, uh, with yeah. that, with that exception. God, that. It. God, I just. God, I hope it's like. Halliburton or something. That'd be awesome. Dude. Niang, I'd love to see Niang talk so much shit. It'd be so fun to see him there. Hell, I would take the mayor coming back. Yeah. For yeah. guest picker. Like, do you know how I hyped say, Ames would be for that? Someone had a someone had a really funny Twitter idea for Iowa or a sign idea for fans and something okay. it said Ames sucks so much the mayor left for Lincoln. And I actually <laughs> laughed out loud. I was All like, right, that's, that's pretty good. That's that's, that's pretty, a pretty funny. Yeah. That's pretty funny. So so um, college yeah. game day. Someone Iowa State related, please. Uh, God, us. I I tweeted. I replied to the game day tweet with that. I yeah. said I said someone. <laughs> I can't remember my exact words, but it was like someone associated with Iowa State for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> oh man. All well, right. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, no problem, man. We'll uh, our our Iowa guest picker had a work conflict. I guess picker special guest had a uh, 
had a work conflict come up that he had to work tonight. So we'll work on Maybe getting him on. on to the recap. Well, I, I talked to him about a recap and he, his, his exact, re- hold on, let me pull up the DM. His exact response was, yeah, we'll make something work. I owe you one. I'll hop on when we have to do a preview for our conference championship games with a winky face. <laughs> yeah. So there uh, you go. Even a Hawk fan. Yep. Has Iowa state going to the, going to the big 12 championship game. Um, but yeah, uh, appreciate all you guys for uh, for watching this episode. If you made it this far, I know it was a little bit of a weird one with technical difficulties and timing, and it was a little unorganized. But we were kind of scrambling to get this one out because we knew we had to get one for the Cyhawk game. So we've got Tom Manning's burner on Twitter. As you can tell from this episode, we get a lot of stuff from Twitter. So make sure you go follow both of us. The links will be down in the description. Thank you once again, TMB for joining us on the unnamed podcast we still don't really have a name so if you, no, if you think of anything and you want to leave it in the comments section it'll probably be first on the leaderboard yes we don't um, we don't really have anything no. at the moment uh but that's that's been myself david braga and tom manning's burner uh if you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already down below make sure you click that bell to get notified whenever there's a live stream or a video on this channel And we will see you guys next time. Peace out.